you've traveled to another dimension. A dimension not only of contradiction and speculation, but also one that defies logic and is based on blind faith. A journey into a nebulous land whose limits are that of imagination. You've just crossed over into the evolution zone. What you're about to see was not planned. There was no script, there were no writers, there were no cameras, no production crew, no lighting, no graphic artists, and no editors. The entire program just happened. There was a big bang in our production studio. And here we are. Could you believe that? Of course you couldn't. Nobody in his right mind could. And yet many evolutionists would have us believe that in the name of science. There was no creator, no space, no energy, no matter. There was nothing. And then there was this big bang, and out came the sea and the land. And birds and flowers and trees and elephants and giraffes and horses and cats and dogs. And of course, man and woman. And this took countless millions of years. We're now going to look closely at some of the believers of the theory of evolution. And we want you to listen very closely to the type of language they use. True believers use what we call the language of speculation. They'll start off sounding like an expert, but because there's such a lack of factual evidence for the theory, they are forced to use words like we surmise, we believe, perhaps, maybe, could have, and possibly. And then they'll end up saying things like, well, I really don't know, I'm not an expert. So watch for these phrases and for these words. So do you believe in the theory of evolution? I, th I do. Do you believe man evolved from apes? Yeah, because of biological evidence, I believe that.
So do you think man evolved from apes? Yeah, I do believe man evolved from apes. Do you believe in the theory of evolution? Yes, definitely. Could you be specific about the evidence? Um, how the planet Earth evolved from heavy particles and matter coming together, and then slowly as it cooled off, um, single cell life forms developed in the ocean, and then slowly they evolved into multi-celled organisms and then eventually into humans. How did it begin? I don't know. Probably the Big Bang Theory. What caused the Big Bang? Probably an asteroid from another planet that had, uh, had the same thing happen to it millions of years ago. Where did the other planet come from? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. There's a lot of things. I mean, you look at, first of all, like homologous structures in animals and analogous structures and these things called vestigial organs. Um, Did they come out of the sea? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's where they evolved because that's the only place that could support life. Okay. When they came out of the sea, was there air? Was there air? It took a while, but yeah, air eventually, because of the breakdown of atoms and stuff, and it was eventually released. So yeah, I think there was air when they came out, because... When they came out, what came out of the ocean? I don't know. You tell me. So do you think we were originally fish? I mean, it's possible. Did it come out as a dog? Probably not. What was probably it? Probably didn't come out as a mammal at all. It probably came out as a reptile and evolved that way. So you think we lived under the water? It's possible at some point. When we were under the water, do you think we had lungs or gills? Oof. <laughs> um. Because I'm trying to think, here is this sort of animal who's coming out of the ocean without lungs, mm -hmm. so he comes out with gills, goes, oh, 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 runs back to water and just keeps coming out until lungs mm -hmm. develop? Yeah. 